Hi guys, my name is Jacob Perrette, and welcome back to Something Sinister, where we explore the horror in fact and in fiction. So on TikTok recently, I've been seeing uh, a lot of The Walking Dead memes, uh, specifically from the television show, and it sort of uh, led me to believe that now that the show has finally capped itself off after 11 seasons, it's sort of having a, a resurgence with its viewership. So old fans are coming back to sort of um, revisit the story and new New fans are coming back to, you know, binge it to completion and uh, check it out for the very first time. Now, I myself, I used to be a pretty big uh, Walking Dead fan. Um, it was sort of like a, a family thing, as weird as that might seem. But I think it was a family thing for a lot of people. Um, it was sort of like, oh, you know, you get together Sunday night with your family, or with your friends, you watch The Walking Dead. Um, some scenes are awkward to watch but overall it's a good time and um, I actually um, personally sort of fell off of the show uh, around season six uh, I think that was when Negan was was first introduced but my family continued to watch it and they were almost uh, bigger fans than I was so much so that um, they got me uh, this uh, for Christmas one year this is compendium number one of The Walking Dead yes a lot of people don't actually know that the whole entire show is based off of a comic series uh, run uh, written by Robert Kirkman, who is one of the writers on the show. What I think my parents didn't know when getting me this, because I was fairly young at the time, was um, the book, the comic is a lot darker, a lot uh, more uh, vulgar, um, uh, very mature. So I had to make a decision. Do I join everyone in, in rewatching the television show? or do I go back and read the comics? And I opted for the latter, because in my opinion, the television show is good for the most part, but it really drags things out a lot. And um, I'm sort of, you know, in, 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 a, in a stage in my life where I just need something to be quick. And so I decided to read the comic. And with that, I created this iceberg. Now with this iceberg, um, I didn't want to spend too much time on the very specific details because I feel like at this juncture, so many people are aware of what the basic story is about. You know, everyone knows who Rick Grimes is, who Carl is. So I really wanted to focus a bulk of this on sort of the darker moments, sort of the, um, some of the fan theories, but I wanted to take the first tier to sort of um, ease everyone into it, you know? What are the important storylines? Who is the writer? And then from there, we'll get into uh, the specifics and every of everything. And I want it to be clear that this is strictly for the comic, not the show. Um, there's, I've seen so many videos on the show. Um, and like I said, not a lot of people know about the comic book. So I wanted to take um, the time to introduce you uh, to it by showing you some of the gross stuff that happens in it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. As always, uh, thank you for subscribing. Uh, leave me a comment down below letting me know uh, what sort of videos you wanna see in the future. And as always, um, I will uh, talk to you in a second. <laughs>
Kirkman then pitched it again with a new added twist that the plague was sent by aliens, and that the comic would be more of an alien invasion story. Kirkman had, of course, no intention of making the comic about aliens, but felt that the lie was necessary to get the comic published, which it did. Days Gone By is the first volume of the Walking Dead series. It follows main character Rick Grimes, who is a sheriff's deputy. Grimes gets wounded in action and falls into a coma. When he awakes, he finds himself in a hospital, but the world he knew has seemingly come and gone. The world is now an apocalyptic wasteland, with flesh-eating zombies everywhere. As the volume continues, Rick travels to a military evacuation zone in Atlanta, where he finds his wife and son, as well as a small group of survivors along the way. They all struggle to adapt to life in the new world. One particularly important story arc follows Rick's good friend, Shane, and how he and Lori grew close during Rick's time in a coma. Shane's jealousy grows, and he eventually attacks Rick, but Rick is saved by his son, Carl, who shoots and kills Shane. Something to Fear is another very important storyline in The Walking Dead. It comes in Volume 17 and introduces one of the series' biggest antagonists, Negan, who is the leader of a group known as the Saviors. Rick and his group join the Hilltop Colony and are soon made aware of the presence of the Saviors. Rick sets out to defeat the group, but pays the price for his underestimation of them. Many of Rick's friends die as a result of this. Negan is described as a casual, jolly, but savage man who adores violence and mayhem. He is very intelligent and logical, possessing a knack for controlling and manipulating others. He has a strong affinity for profane language and offensive comments, and a morbid, perverse sense of humor, seeming to enjoy the shock value of it all. He is infamous for carrying around a baseball bat coated in barbed wire, whom he refers to as Lucille. Much to the dismay of fans of the television series, Daryl Dixon is a fictional character made specifically for the television show. He never appears in the comic series. Many people have confused Daryl with the character of Dwight, a member of the Saviors group who also carries a crossbow. The Whisperers are another important group from The Walking Dead. They can be described as a mostly quiet and nomadic threat. They are a group that wear the skin of walkers as a means of camouflaging themselves and masking their smell, as well as their identities. The leader of the group is known as Alpha, and should be noted as the first major female villain of the franchise. As briefly touched on before, in the days gone by storyline, Rick is in a coma, leaving his wife Lori and son Carl on their own. During this time, Rick's longtime friend, Shane, agrees to take Lori and Carl to the evacuation zone in Atlanta. During this time, Lori and Shane grow close to one another. Shane is adamant that Rick is not going to wake from his coma, and that he is, in fact, dead. In a moment of tension, Lori sleeps with Shane, ultimately cheating on her husband. This could have potentially led to Lori's pregnancy with her daughter Judith, but it is left ambiguous as to who the child actually belongs to. Because Rick is appointed to be the leader of the group of survivors, Rick often delivers monologues to the group. These can range from tactical, motivational, or plans for the future. In one particular monologue, however, Rick states that while the dead are up and walking around, the remaining survivors, because of their now animalistic tendencies and need to survive, are actually the walking dead. Here is a short excerpt of the speech. The second we put a bullet in the head of one of those undead monsters, the moment one of us drove a hammer into one of their faces or cut off their head, we became what we are. And that's just it. That is what it comes down to. You people don't know what we are. We are surrounded by the dead. We are among them. And when we finally give up, we become them. We're living on borrowed time here. Every minute of our life is a minute that we steal from them. You see them out there. You know that when we die, we become them. You think we hide behind walls to protect us from the walking dead. Don't you get it? We are the walking dead.
The Walking Dead series is infamous for killing off beloved characters, and its overall unforgiving narrative even for characters like Rick. In an effort to show readers that no character is safe, Rick had his hand chopped off fairly early on in the series. After being kidnapped by the governor and his forces at a community known as Woodbury, the governor uses a knife to cut off Rick's right hand, forcing him to learn how to shoot and do regular tasks with the other. Unlike their television counterparts, Andrea and Dale engage in a romantic relationship in the comic series. This has fallen under much controversy for the large age gap between the two. At one point in the comic, Andrea admits that her and her sister saw Dale as a protective figure at the beginning of the apocalypse, and as a result, they flirted with him in order to get a ride to the Atlanta safe zone in his RV. After the death of Andrea's sister, Andrea clings to Dale, and they begin their relationship with one another. They even go as far as to adopt Ben and Billy after both of their parents die. When Rick and his group discover a seemingly abandoned prison on their journey, they decide to take the opportunity to clear out the walkers and use the prison as their new home. However, after clearing out the walkers, Rick finds a small group of convicts held up in the cafeteria. While apprehensive in allowing Rick and his group to stay there, the convicts ultimately decide that they can coexist. It isn't long, however, before one of the convicts, named Thomas, begins targeting and killing the women of the group. When Rick finds out about this, he decides the best course of action is to hang Thomas for the atrocities that he has committed. The group puts Thomas in a holding cell for the night, only for one of Herschel's daughters to set him free out of sympathy. Thomas quickly turns on her and attacks her before being shot and killed. This moment marks one of the first times Rick shows his true animosity. There is a popular theory among Walking Dead fans that Rick Grimes is the actual antagonist of the story. Throughout the series, we watch Rick's mental deterioration as he is forced to make more difficult, morally ambiguous decisions. Rick's group begins as a naive bunch, which causes them to be taken advantage of by other groups of survivors. As time goes on, Rick's group adopts the necessity of survival, which is not always black and white. For example, the first community that they stumble upon is Woodbury. The leader of the community appears kind to his people, but rapes and pillages behind the curtain. Over time, Rick adopts some of these attributes in an effort to not be made the victim again and to protect his family. The best example of this comes in the form of the Hunters, who attack and cannibalize group member Dale as a means of survival. Instead of running away or trying to communicate, Rick and the members of his group viciously kill the Hunters, men and women. Another character like Negan, who appears to be the antagonist after killing members of Rick's group, is later revealed to have a sympathetic background, taking his identity as a villain and pulling it into question. Author Robert Kirkman had pitched the idea of The Walking Dead to Image Comics on multiple occasions. At first, they were apprehensive to take the deal because they believed that The Walking Dead was too basic. In an effort to prove them wrong, Kirkman made up the fact that the cause of the zombie apocalypse was from aliens. The series itself would follow the zombie apocalypse as well as an overall alien invasion. The combination of these two things sparked the interest of Image, allowing Kirkman to make his start on the series. While the origin is never explored in the series itself, when asked about the origin on Twitter, Kirkman simply replied, Space Spores. During their stay at the prison, Rick suspects prisoner Dexter, who admits to being a murderer, as the culprit behind the deaths of Herschel's daughters. Dexter denies these claims and hatches a plan to break into the prison's armory and steal guns, ultimately driving Rick and his group out and retaking the prison. Just as Dexter's plan is coming to fruition, a horde of zombies attacks, causing all of the survivors in the prison to join together and get rid of them. In a hail of gunfire, Rick shoots Dexter, killing him. In the aftermath, Rick plays it off as if it was a stray bullet that killed Dexter, when in reality, Rick did it to avoid being overtaken and kicked out of the prison. As mentioned previously, the Hunters are a group of survivors who subsist off of cannibalism. 
Rick and his group encounter the hunters while making their trip up to DC. The hunters successfully capture Dale, who wakes up and notices that they are eating his leg. Despite his horror, Dale can't help but laugh hysterically. The hunters look at one another and play it off as if it is some type of delirium. Dale then exclaims that the hunters are eating tainted meat, as he was bitten by a walker and is now infected with the zombie virus. An interesting fan theory states that the walkers shown in The Walking Dead might actually be solar powered. The theory is based around the idea that certain walkers are able to move around and function normally without having critical organs. The answer for this is because the walkers' cells are able to feed off of solar energy, explaining how walkers could survive for years despite not having any food. It also explains why the walkers that are outside and exposed to sun are seen constantly moving and roaming around, whereas the ones in dark, abandoned buildings sit still unless they are disturbed. The walker brain also recognizes that sunlight is unavailable and goes into hibernation mode to save energy during the winter. Susie and Rachel are two daughters of Herschel, a farmer that Rick and his group seek when Carl is accidentally shot in the forest. During their stay at the prison, Susie and Rachel fall victim to serial killer Thomas, who decapitates them while they are in a barber shop section of the prison. The imagery for the aftermath of this is truly terrifying. Out of Rick's entire group, Tyrese serves as Rick's left-hand man, often accompanying Rick on the more difficult challenges that the group faces. After Rick, Glenn, and Michonne escape from Woodbury, Michonne launches a plan to track down the governor and the rest of Woodbury's army after they attack the prison initially. Both Michonne and Tyrese are then captured, and Tyrese is brought back to the prison, where the governor uses Michonne's sword to decapitate him in front of Rick and the entire group. Julie is the daughter of Tyrese. Her boyfriend's name is Chris. The three of them run into Rick and his group as they are moving away from Atlanta. Chris and Julie can be described as being hopelessly in love with one another, so much so that they decide to engage in a suicide pact with one another. After arriving at the prison, the two of them have sex before drawing a pistol and pointing it at one another. They agree that at the end of the countdown, they will both pull the trigger and kill one another simultaneously. They are unsuccessful, however, as Chris shoots Julie before she can pull the trigger, resulting in her death alone. Tyrese discovers this and grabs Chris by the throat, choking him until he dies. After taking refuge in the Alexandria safe zone, everything seems to be going well for Rick and his group. However, one of the walls in the safe zone becomes unhinged, allowing for walkers to press up against it and make a bigger hole in the wall. They then slowly begin spreading through the safe zone, forcing Rick, Carl, and a few others to have to escape their homes. They achieve this by smearing walker blood and entrails on themselves to mask their smell. While maneuvering through the horde, things go awry and Carl is mistakenly shot through the eye. He recovers, but the haunting image of him getting his dad's attention sticks with many readers, including myself. In the aftermath, Carl dates a girl named Lydia, who seems to have some sort of sexual fascination with his eye socket. Carol is another character who is very different from her beloved television counterpart. In the comic series, she is much younger. She and her daughter, Sophia, initially cling to Tyrese as a lover and a father figure. This is soon cut short when she witnesses Tyrese receiving oral sex from Michonne. The two break things off, and Carol begins a slow descent into mental unrest. She routinely tries to make sexual advances on Rick and Lori, but both reject her. Carol eventually sleeps with Herschel's son, Billy, before approaching a chained-up walker. She speaks to it, telling her that they will get along great before allowing the walker to bite open her neck, causing her to bleed to death. Another interesting Walking Dead theory says that Rick Grimes himself is immune to the zombie infection. 
Early on in the story, after Julie and Chris's suicide pact, Julie is reanimated as a walker without ever having been bitten. This revelation leads the group to discover that all humans are inherently infected with the virus and turn after they die, unless their brain is destroyed. Many people look back to the beginning of the series when Rick was shot in the line of duty, causing him to be sent to the hospital and fall into a coma. As we all know, Rick wakes up in the hospital and recovers fully from the injury. Some people believe, however, that Rick actually died during the gunshot and was seemingly reanimated back to life, but without being transformed into a walker, thus making him immune. This theory is interesting, but very far-fetched, in my opinion. What do you think about it? As mentioned before, the Hunters are a group of survivors that subsist off of cannibalism. Rick and his group run into them while on their way to DC. The group kidnaps Dale and eats his leg, prompting Rick to confront them head on. It isn't long before Rick and select members of his group begin tearing the Hunters apart in the most savage way possible. This is a landmark case, as it is one of the first to fully illustrate the brutal nature of the group. It is so savage, in fact, that Father Gabriel, who witnessed it, even goes as far as to tell Alexandria Safe Zone leader Douglas that Rick and the group are not suited to live in such a nice community because of the atrocities that they committed. Ben and Billy are the twin brothers of Donna and Alan, two survivors who we meet initially when Rick makes it to Atlanta. Over time, the boys watch as their mother and father die in horrible ways. This leads Ben to have a misjudgment in evaluating life and death. Ben takes a knife and kills his brother Billy, believing that he will reanimate as the walkers do. Perhaps even just as disturbing, in the follow-up, the group is unsure of what to do with Ben, as he might be a potential threat to others. Carl sneaks out in the middle of the night and shoots Ben as a means of proving his strength to his father. This is where things start getting particularly graphic. When tracking the location of a downed helicopter, Rick, Michonne, and Glenn follow the tracks from the crash site that lead them to a small town called Woodbury. They are then captured and questioned by the governor and his men. Rick and his group are unwilling to disclose information about their location at the prison, fearing that people from Woodbury could go back and threaten their loved ones, or even worse. Because they do not give out the information, the governor splits them up, eventually holding Glenn and Michonne as prisoners in what appears to be some sort of garage. The governor has his men tie up Michonne before he beats and rapes her. Glenn hears this from the room where he is being held. While most of the violence and rape is not shown, what is implied through sound might be even worse. Piggybacking off of what we just talked about, a Woodbury resident named Rodriguez takes Rick, Glenn, and Michonne and helps them escape Woodbury. As they are leaving, Michonne opts to stay behind. The group is unsure of what she is trying to achieve, but ultimately lets her go. From here, Michonne locates the governor in his home and breaks in. She then knocks him unconscious. When he wakes up, he is completely nude. His genitals have been nailed to a board beneath him. Michonne then proceeds to get her revenge, using a drill to dig into the governor's skin before she chops his arm off with her sword. She then uses a blowtorch to cauterize the wound, ultimately saving him from bleeding to death. She then takes a spoon and inserts it into his rectum, before taking it and gouging out his eyeball. Where none of the violence is directed at Michonne was seen entirely, Kirkman and his writers don't shy away from showing the violent acts this time around. This theory is one of the more well-known on the list, mostly because it encapsulates the entire series. I personally think it's kind of lame, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Basically, the theory states that Rick takes the gunshot wound, winds up in the hospital in a coma, but never wakes up. What he imagines during his time in unconsciousness is the zombie apocalypse, as well as all the stories in the comic. Many readers thought that the series would end with him waking up in the hospital from the nightmare. During the prison saga, the governor stands as the first main antagonist in the series. Aside from all of the sick and twisted things he did to Michonne, Rick, and Glenn, this one is disturbing on an entirely different level. 
The governor seems to have a fascination with the walkers, ordering his men to sever the heads of a select few so that he can put them in fish tanks and admire them. He also keeps alive his zombified daughter, keeping her on a chain leash and then feeding her parts from the people that he massacres. In one shocking moment, the governor is seen plucking out the teeth from his daughter's mouth. It isn't long before he leans in and kisses her with an open mouth. This is quite the contrast to the television show's depiction of their relationship. Glenn is one of the original members of the group. He appears for the first time when Rick is trying to navigate through a zombie-infested Atlanta. Glenn saves Rick and helps him find Lori and Carl. As the series progresses, many members of the group look at Glenn and his partner Maggie as a sign of hope. They are a young couple navigating their way through the new world. This makes it all the more heartbreaking when Negan and the Saviors capture Glenn and other members of Rick's group. Negan lines them up and plays a game of Eeny Meeny Miny Mo before randomly selecting Glenn to be killed via baseball bat. The death is very brutal and many readers and watchers of the television show quit watching after his death. When traveling back to his hometown to see if his friend Morgan is still alive, Rick Abraham and Carl decide to camp for the night on an abandoned road. They are then woken up in the middle of the night by a gang of survivors who intend to rob them, but not before taking advantage of them. Yes, this includes the young Carl, who is forced down by one of the survivors. This makes the comeback all the more satisfying when Rick takes a huge bite out of one of the survivors' necks before butchering the man who forced down Carl. This is perhaps one of the most shocking moments in Walking Dead history. After the governor and his men drive their vehicles through the fence at the prison, Rick knows that he is in a losing battle. In an effort to protect himself and his family, he asks them to escape with him on foot. As they are running through back alleyways of the prison, Lori and newborn baby Judith are shot and killed with a shotgun. Rick witnesses this shielding young Carl's eyes as he tells him to keep running. Lori falls down, crushing the newborn beneath her. This event cemented Kirkman's reputation as a ruthless puppet master, relentlessly pulling the strings of his unforgiving narrative. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. If you like this content and want to see more like it, or something entirely different, leave a comment down below letting me know what it is you would like to see. And as always, stay safe out there.